On December 31st, 192 AD, the Roman Emperor Commodus was assassinated as part of a conspiracy orchestrated by members of the Senate to regain control of the Roman Empire. 1,808 years later, the film Gladiator, loosely based on Commodus's rule and death, was released. Though the film is praised by both critics and fans alike, it still teeters on a line between based on a true story and complete historical fiction. But which side does it really belong on? Does its handful of real characters and events push it over the edge? Or does everything else in the film keep it fictional? How accurate is Gladiator? Before we get into the plot, we'll first mention that the main character of Maximus is totally fictional and almost all of his story is invented just for the film. But his characteristics are inspired by several important historical figures, such as Spartacus, the leader of a slave rebellion, Cincinnatus, the archetypal Roman citizen, and the wrestler Narcissus. More on him in a bit. The film itself opens in 180 AD at the end of the Marcomannic Wars between the Roman Empire and a coalition of Germanic tribes. It specifically starts at a battle near Vindabona, the future location of Vienna. Marcus Aurelius really was in Vindabona for several years, but his son Commodus was with him for over two years, not just the last few days. The film shows, after the final victory and the end of the war, Commodus kills his father in a fit of rage after being told he would not ascend to the throne. Aurelius did die at Vindabona that year. However, virtually everything else depicted there is fictional, starting with the relationship between Marcus and Commodus. Marcus Aurelius was the last of the so-called five good emperors, distinct from others in the fact that the first four all appointed adopted sons as their heirs, and Aurelius may have attempted this early on, but in the end not only allowed Commodus to succeed him, but before his death gave him increased power, even appointing him co-emperor in 177 AD. Furthermore, Marcus Aurelius died of natural causes. He was not murdered by his son, and, as previously noted, there was no motive for it. And when Commodus became sole emperor, he was only 18 years old, and his rule would last for over 12 years. And in the early part of his reign, he was not universally despised. The film has him returning to Rome and being met with boos from the people in the city. But for the first few years of his reign, it was relatively peaceful in the empire. He was popular with the common people and the military. However, he soon proved to be erratic and a terrible leader. And as the film depicts, he was very proud of his physical prowess. He often compared himself to Hercules, and really would enter the arena as a gladiator, and as alluded to in the film when he stabs Maximus, most of his matches were not fair. In the final days of his life, he hosted the plebeian games, where he would stand on platforms and spear exotic animals, and fight as a gladiator against prisoners, often very sick or amputees, who were sometimes tied together so he could pretend he was clubbing a giant to death. These actions and other political moves led to his steep decline in popularity, and he faced many assassination attempts throughout his reign, including one involving his sister, Lucilla. In the film, she is a widow who is motivated to act against her brother to protect her son, Lucius Verus, who is named after her late husband. Lucilla was actually married during the events in the film, and was probably more concerned with becoming empress herself than her son's safety. And she did name her first son after her first husband, Lucius. However, that son died as a young boy, and her son that would grow to adulthood was named Pompanius after her second husband. And the plot she was involved with failed terribly, and she and her daughter were exiled and then ultimately executed for their involvement. The plot in the film is just as unsuccessful, with all the conspirators being captured or killed, and Maximus is only able to kill Commodus by chance in the Colosseum, and then he states power would be returned to the Senate as Marcus Aurelius wished it. The real plot, orchestrated in December of 192 by several senators and involving Commodus' lover Marcia, was to have her poison him, and when that didn't work, she brought Commodus' wrestling partner Narcissus into his bedchamber where he strangled the emperor to death in his bath. The film says the goal of the assassination was to reinstate the Roman Republic. However, the senators had actually already selected Pertinax to be the new emperor, and in the end probably destabilized the government even more, seeing as the following year of 193 
is known as the Year of the Five Emperors, the result of several more assassinations. The true parts of the story actually make up very little of the film, but one of the things praised about it is the realism of even the fictional elements, and while it portrays Roman society more realistic, making it dirty and imperfect, it still gets many things wrong, such as Maximus's owner, Proximo, tells of how he was a gladiator, but was awarded his freedom by the emperor for his success in the arena, and is given a wooden sword called a rudis or a rudius as a symbol of his freedom. The sword in the film is plain wood, but it should have had etched into it a list of all of Proximo's greatest victories. He also mentions that Marcus Aurelius banned gladiator games in Rome, forcing him out of the city. The emperor actually only banned the games in the city of Antioch, and there was actually a shortage of gladiators in Rome at the time, which would have made Lenistas like Proximo much higher profits. And an important aspect of the games left out of the film is the sheer commercialism of them. Gladiators would often carry out flags or banners advertising businesses and politicians, and especially towards the end of the empire, many of them were not even slaves, but freedmen seeking fame and fortune in the arena. Something that is almost always left out of the movies about gladiators is just how specialized they were. The film has them picking random weapons and armor before a battle, when in reality, most gladiators were very specific in their armor, weapons, and fighting styles. Even the decorations on their helmets were determined by what their class was. Twice in the film, gladiators turn to the emperor and recite, We who are about to die salute you, as a show of respect. While this is a popular phrase in fiction, it was only recorded once in Roman history, at games in 52 AD, almost 150 years earlier, and it is doubtful that it was ever used again. And all the gladiator matches, save for Maximus and Crixus, end in death for the opposing side. And while the games were certainly dangerous and their competitors' lives short, by the 2nd century, maybe as few as 1 in 10 matches actually ended with a death. At the end of the day, is Gladiator really a true story? We think, yes. Is it accurate? Not at all. But can you learn from it? Sure. Should you watch it to study for a history test? No. But just because it is more fiction than not, doesn't make what was true false. But what do you think? What section would you file Gladiator under? Let us know in the comments below. And let us know what other movies we should tackle next. And be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching.